Yo, what's going on, E7 fam, as well as Overlord fans? I'm Sue, but feel free to call me Pat, and this video will be my first impressions for Ainz's favorite chair, Shaltir Bloodfawn, as well as where I think she excels and what kind of equipment sets and artifacts I would play on her. If you're coming here from the Overlord collab and are a new player to Epic 7, I recommend watching my impressions of Ainz first, as well as checking out my new player guide. Also, I do not want to waste your time, so I'll let you know right now that Shaltier is a character I believe is aimed at veteran players for PvP. If she is your favorite character from Overlord, I still recommend that you pull for her as every collab limited hero is worth owning. Just know that she doesn't really appear to be very useful to new players for PvE. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump right in and take a look at Shaltier's ultimate. Shaltier Bloodfallen, go once again, Epic 7 art department just absolutely crushing it. Ultimate looks amazing on this character. Speaking of amazing, Shaltier's Japanese voice actress for this game, as well as in Overlord, is Sumire Uesaka. You can hear her as the voice of Nagatoro from Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro, Drake from one of my other favorite gacha games, Goddess of Victory, Nikkei, and of course she is the current voice of the original anime waifu, Lun the Invader, from Urusei Yatsura. Moving on to Shaltir's stat, she is a 5-star Fire Warrior of the Sagittarius Zodiac symbol, which means she shares a stat line with Zahak, Chloe, and then the collab heroes Benny Morrow, as well as Soul Bad Guy. She boasts the highest starting critical hit chance for all 5 stars in Epic 7, as well as the second highest speed for a warrior in Epic 7. Her attack is average, and her health and defense are quite poor when compared to other warriors in Epic 7. Her imprint for the team is health percentage, which is decently useful, but the real money maker, of course, is the self imprint, which is critical hit chance, which is seen as the most desirable thing to have for a DPS, which, spoiler alert, Shaltir is a DPS, as you will learn in the very next section when we talk about the skills. But needless to say, dupes are really good on this character. As always, now let's break down the kit before we talk about the character as a whole, starting with Shaltir's passive, True Vampire. Damage suffered in one attack does not exceed 70% of her max health. At max skill level, this changes to 51%. At the start of the turn, when the caster's health is 60% or more, Shaltir gets an attack buff for one turn. At the end of each of Shaltir's turns, she grants herself stealth for one turn, basically making her untargetable by single target attacks unless she is the last person standing. Shaltir's skill 3 and her ultimate skill is Purifying Javelin. You acquire two souls upon use, and it has a 3-4 to four turn cooldown depending on skill level. Dispels all buffs from an enemy before Shaltir attacks with a giant javelin of white silver. It increases her hit chance by 100% when she uses this skill. Basically, your opponent can't dodge it. It ignores effect resistance of any targets with attack lower than the caster's attack. This is essentially a fancy way of saying that the dispel all buffs portion before she deals damage will trigger assuming that she has more attack than the target. And finally, Shaltir's basic attack, Summon Household. Summons different familiars to attack the enemy, inflicting injuries. The severity of injuries increases proportional to damage dealt. Injuries decrease the max health of the target up to 10% every time this skill is used. And for the cost of 10 souls, you could soul burn this move to increase the damage multiplier on it and also decrease max health of the target by up to 20%. So, now that we know the kit, let's break down the character and let's start with Summon Household. Because it has innate built-in injury, we can infer two things. Number one, this character probably not good in PvE because injury only works in PvP. And two, it's really good against health scaling heroes because, well, you just reduce their maximum health, which means that they have less potency and less damage overall on their moves. Her skill 3, Purifying Javelin, paints a similar story in that it is something that suggests that she is a pure counterpick PvP unit. It gives a bunch of hit chance and clears the way of buffs like barriers and critical hit resistance. It is very obviously designed to be a move that kills dodge based heroes outright, such as Savior Auden. That's a character that commonly is behind barriers from ROL and critical hit resistance buffs from Navy Captain Landy in current meta drafts. 
Her passive true vampire is actually really funny to me. It's everything you'd expect it not to be. Usually a vampire passive gives lifesteal or immortality or maybe even enrage. The fact that it's called true vampire and it has nothing to do with any of the other previous vampire passives is really, really funny. This one is instead a modified version of Tempest Cern's passive, only better or worse depending on how you look at it. Oh, also the passive just happens to have Benny Morrow's Tachi effect stapled to it because, you know, otherwise players wouldn't want to pull for the Shaltir artifact and play that on her. You just slap Tachi on her. So how thoughtful of them to give me a free built-in limited artifact. So that's pretty great. Anyways, let's get back to talking about what is better and what is worse about this passive compared to Tempest Cern. It's better in that it is so much more difficult to interact with this character after turn one with the normal Tempest Cern counters like your Rimuru's or your Icarina's because she's going to basically always be in stealth much more readily. Tempest Cern will be in stealth, enter turn, come out of stealth, and then once you take an action, go back into stealth. There is a very clearly defined window that you can attack this character. Shaltir does not have that window. What makes it worse is that once she's exposed, maybe she gets hit by an AoE or the stealth gets stripped or she gets hit with unbuffable. She's kind of in a bad spot because Tempest Cern will cleanse off the debuffs and go back into stealth. That's not the case with Shaltir. She is completely exposed until she gets to her very next turn. And a character with her bulk stats, basically they're dead right away if they're left open. She is a pure glass cannon character. At the end of the day, I see her as a color-shifted, remixed version of Zahak. Zahak can be built blazing fast as a super high-damage glass cannon character to counter dodge heroes, and he has built-in injury to boot in order to give him some utility against health scalers. Shaltir is almost exactly the same. True Vampire, in my opinion, does give her more survivability than Zahak, which kind of gives her the leg up and might make him relegated to just Nightmare Raids going forward and replaced by her entirely. The big question mark for this character is, of course, going to be damage. The video shows some truly impressive damage numbers in the 20 to 30k range, but we all know how deceiving preview videos can be. More than anything, we need to know how good is Shaltir's damage. If her damage isn't good enough, well, then players are just going to stick with their Zahaks and their last piece Karins. If the damage is really good, though, I think people are going to be slamming their premium speed DPS sets on her. And that's pretty much going to be the go-to build on this character. Speed set with penetration as the two-piece offset. And if you just don't have good penetration gear, you can use critical hit chance set if you are someone who is on a budget or just simply newer to the game. Given this character's poor bulk and the fact that she has a glass cannon kit, there's not really much else to say about how you'd play her. Just pick her as a counter pick in PvP after you've jammed on a bunch of gear that gives speed, attack, crit chance, crit damage. That's it. The only other thing to really talk about is the artifact. And that artifact is Pipette Lance. When attacking with a single target attack, increases the damage dealt of the user by 10 to 20% based on artifact level and absorbs 15% of the damage dealt as health. Holy crap, what a cracked artifact. So the fact that the character has built-in Benny Mars Tachi, you don't really want to play that. Traditionally, that is the go-to for damage-dealing warriors. This is really, really impressive because at max rank, it gives 20% damage, not attack, damage increase, which is at the end of the entire multiplier. Usually, you only get that with things like Portrait of the Saviors, which is one of the better artifacts in the game for damage. But that has a condition of they have to be basically at high health. This works all the time. So this is a insane damage increase for a warrior if they are a single target DPS. On top of that, there is built-in lifesteal with this thing. So that, that way you don't actually have to go the lifesteal route like Tempest Cern would in order to maintain some of the buffs and stay over half health so that you don't get killed in one hit with Shaltir. So pretty much hands down, I think this is just going to end up being the best option on the character. You could argue playing Portrait of the Saviors or... Symbol of Unity might be budget options if you don't have Pipette Lance, but I think if you're pulling for Shaltir, you probably should come across one of these or at least buy one in the Powder Shop. It just feels like very clearly the best option. And this is going to end up being a, a situation like Benny Mars Tachi where you might want to have multiple of these things just lying around. 
Uh, I don't know yet. It remains to be seen because, well, if you're a single target DPS, in some cases, this is just better than Sigurds for you. Like, I don't know how, you know, how much like ammo can might want it. Martial artist can, but the counter damage is pretty big on this thing. If he was on Pipette Lance, the problem is that uh, he's not going to have the lifesteal, the big lifesteal like he would on Sigurds side because Sigurds gets 50% when you are below a certain damage threshold. But there might be something to be said for he gets health off of every single counter. It's definitely something that we have to test. But yeah, um, absolutely cracked artifact in my opinion. I think that if you are somebody who likes to play very aggressively, Sheltier is a pretty good pickup for you. And her artifact is definitely something that you'd want to roll for multiple copies. So if you're a fan of Sheltier, even though she's probably one of the most straightforward and linear characters I've had to do an impressions video on in a while... It's hard to say that the character is not simple, strong, and effective uh, with a really strong artifact to boot. Pretty much the only reason that she wouldn't see play in PvP game modes is if her damage numbers are just really not all there. But I think considering it's a collab limited uh, and the numbers we saw in the preview video, that's probably going to be more than likely the case. And if it's not, you could probably expect an emergency buff just like with Edward Elric. So those are pretty much my thoughts on Shaltier and her artifact. Make sure, if you haven't already, to check out my first impressions on Ainz as well as Albedo. Both will be linked down in this video's description. And if you enjoyed it, as always, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel. It does help me out here a ton. I would really appreciate it. It costs you nothing, and it's one of the best things you can do for a content creator. If you want to watch me play certain characters like Albedo, Ainz, or maybe impossibly Shaltier, which she's not really my play style, but if you do want to see me play the Overlord characters live, you can check me out on my Twitch over at twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.